Hi, this is a video to help you fix a airbag alarm on a Peugeot. This is a Peugeot 206. Uh, it's a diesel, but they're all pretty much the same. And it's just to give you an idea, this one, every time I turn it on, I get this airbag light and it won't go out. I've tried various things to fix it. I've come to a solution which does work and I just want to show you what this is. The usual problem with the airbag is what they call a squib. Now I've taken the, the airbag out of this one. It's quite easy to do. Plenty of inf information on YouTube as to how to get it out. Really we just push a pin into a hole underneath here. If I can show you. Uh, where are we? There he is. So there's a hole in there which is in the steering wheel and if you push up on that you'll push this bar that bar there and it will release the clips there and there and it will allow the the airbag to pop forwards you've then got two connectors to remove uh there are instructions everywhere that i've seen is to turn take the battery off so disconnect the battery before you take these plugs out and leave it for a good 10 minutes, 20 minutes, just to make sure any voltage is discharged throughout the system and then you can take these plugs out. Just for your information, they do have a locking tab in there. So if you look at this little tab here, it's got two parts to it. It's got a clip at the side here, or it's got a tab at the side here, which pushes these tabs out, those tabs there, and locks it into place so that it won't fall out. And the second thing is, is these two little yellow tabs here. And when you push that in, those two little yellow tabs push a shorting bar away on the airbag. So when you take this plug out, the two pins get shorted out so that you can't accidentally, with static, set the airbag off. Um, so that's what this thing's doing. To get those plugs out, you have to, before you do it, get a screwdriver into the back of that and pop that out. So it comes out like that. Once that's out, the plug will just pull out of, of the unit and then you can take the airbag away. So from that point, you're then gonna put the battery back on and do some checks with it. Now, if you've got an airbag light, it's usually caused by the clock spring, they call it, which is a, a coil of wire that sits inside here. But all you've got is these two connections here going through the, the steering wheel and then round this clock spring and then out at the back on these two wires here. There's, there's one on that side and if I can get you round here, there's one on that side. There's the other one. So what we want to do, usually, as I say, it's that what they call the, the comms 2000 unit and it's just one of the wires in there that breaks. But to check it out before you spend money on a new comms unit, which are bloody expensive, unless you go on eBay and try and get a second-hand one, and then you could have the same fault, you can meter out the, the connections through these wires to tell you whether it is actually a fault in this circuit. So the first thing you need to do is take this plug off the back of here. Now there's a little tab on there, push that tab, and the plug will pop out. What happens when you take that plug out, there is an earth, there's a shorting bar on the back of here. Now I don't know whether I can get on it for you. Um, you probably can't see it, but in the back there, when you take the plug out, the two pins that stick out the back there then get shorted out. There's a connection that goes straight across them. And we can use that to help us to measure the, um, the, the, the wire that's inside that squib. Because we now have um, this connection, the wire comes out of this side, goes through the um, steering wheel, back out onto that pin, and then it's shorted out across there, and it comes back through the um, COMS 2000 cable or clock spring, uh, turn the indicator off, and then back out to here. So if I put a wire into there and a wire into there and a meter across it, I should read very low ohm, very low resistance. If anything, it's going to be around about one, maybe two ohms because of the uh, resistance of the wires. Now, I'm finding the best thing to use is a 3.3 ohm resistor, which is one of those. You can get them on eBay, 10 a penny. They're really cheap. Buy a load of them and you can use them for diagnostic purposes. So the first thing you're going to do is push one side into there and get another one and push that into, I'll move my finger in a minute, into there. So you've got two resistors sticking out of that 
connector. Right, so now you're going to get a meter, a multimeter, and you need it set to, to ohms. And with that plug disconnected on the back, you're going to connect your resistant, your meter, your ohm meter, or your multimeter, whatever you've got, one across that side, and the other wire across the other pin there, like that. Okay, so we've got that on there. And what we should read then is round about one ohms. It's actually, a, it's, a, it's a short circuit, but you've got the resistance in the wire, so it's going to be round about one ohm that you should measure through that. If you've got that, then that cable is good. It might just be worth wiggling the wheel about and seeing if you can make that resistance, resi resistance change. If it doesn't change, that connection all the way through from here, through your steering wheel, through the clock spring, out the back, and then back into the clock spring, and then back up to here, is good on that one. So you're gonna check that one, and I'm also gonna check the other one. So I need to disconnect the plug from this one, which again is a tab on there, and it'll push away. So that's the other wire, the color-coded one's brown and one's blue. So the brown one is now disconnected. So again, we've shorted the back out of that, and I'm now looking at the green one on the front. So if I put a resistor in that one and the other resistor in that one, so I've now got my connections through there, one going into there, one going into there, and my meter on that side, I can now look at my resistance on that, and that is reading slightly higher, so that's telling me that I possibly have a, a poor circuit on that. Yeah, it looks like... Ah, there it is, gone back down. I think it's just the shorting wire on that. So now I've got the short on there, it's quite happy. So we, I've got 2.2, if I wiggle that about, there's my 1. So I think that's just the shorting connection on the back. Um, so that's my green one is good, and my blue one's good. And if I wiggle the, the steering wheel about... I don't lose, just trying to turn the steering wheel, I don't lose any resistance. So I know that the connection through that machine, through that um, comms 2000 unit is good. So my next thing is now to try and find out whether I can con the, the, the car into thinking he's got an airbag in place. All the car is looking at, or all the controller is looking at, is to see round about three ohms of resistance when it checks it out. So when I turn the ignition on, it's going to do a self-check and it's looking to see 3.3 ohms roundabout on that um, airbag. It will fail if it sees no resistance at all, so if it sees a break in the wire it will give you an alarm. It will also give you an alarm if it sees a short circuit, so if the wire sh is short-circuited and when it is connected to itself, it's going to give you exactly the same fault. Now I'm going to turn the, the ignition off and I'm now going to put the resistor in this blue plug. So if I just put the phone down for a minute, I'll just put the phone there. I'm going to put the resistor into there, and I'll show you how that's gone in. So that's now gone in like that. So that's the one resistor across the blue plug, and then I need a second resistor, which I have to find. Where's he gone? Oh, he's up here. So the second resistor is going in the brown plug, which is on the other side. So I'll put that one into here and now I have the brown the, the other resistor in the brown plug so I've now got all of it, this out of circuit so I've got the resistor in the blue one and the resistor in the brown one so if I turn it on now with any luck it will tell me that the airbag light has gone out there it goes so now it's quite happy if I disconnect one of those resistors now so if I pull that resistor out and I'll show you the light as it's doing it. So we'll pull this light out. There's a resistor out. And we'll wait a second. And there's my airbag alarm. So it now knows that there's a fault in the airbag system. Now I can't put the resistor back in because it will still tell me there's an error. I have to turn the ignition off. Put the resistor back in. Into here. and then turn it back on and if everything's happy the alarm will go out there it goes it's gone 
So if you know that that side of it is good, that's your wiring from here back to the controller, which is underneath the ashtray, is all good. You know that's good. So if you've got a fault still, the fault has to be beyond here through this clock spring or actually in the airbag itself. So your next thing to check is to plug these plugs back in and then put your resistor on the end of here and see if it'll still be happy. So let's do that. That's the brown one. And get him in. It's a bit fiddly because I can't see what I'm doing. There's one. So that's the brown one back in. And the blue one back in. Okay, so I've now connected these ones back up. So there's my blue one connected up, and my brown one is connected up. And so they come all the way through that clock spring and come out of the top here. So if I take my resistors now and put them into here, see if I can show you it going on. So there is a 3.3 ohm resistor across the green, the green one like that. There he is. And I need the other one, the other 3.3 ohm resistor in the blue one. So that is going to go into there like that. So now I've got 3.3 ohm resistor. Make sure it isn't shorting itself out. So I've got 3.3 ohm resistor in the blue and a 3.3 ohm resistor in the green. So now we'll turn the ignition off. Wait for a second. And then try it again. So turn it back on. And my airbag light goes out. So I know that the squib or the comms 2000 unit, which is this unit back here, is absolutely fine. If I've still got a fault, the only thing it can be is the airbag itself, because if I take this resistor out of here, let me see if I can show you both, the resistor comes out and the light comes on. Okay, so that's how to check your airbag and how to fix it with a resistor. I wouldn't recommend obviously leaving the resistor in place because it is a safety device so you really need to have the airbag in place but for a fault finding um, exercise you can use a 3.3 ohm resistor or two 3.3 ohm resistors to mimic the, the position of an airbag. If this all works with resistors in here and in this one and you lose the light the fault is with the airbag itself and you'll need to change that airbag. Uh, if you've got a fault with the wire, then you can spend the money on the squib. Thank you.